Ladies and gentlemen, a Rini Ushla, who I am fearful for to a horror, Tronona Egg, and Taspantus, Ian the Hall in Shaw, that Kenneth Webb. You're very welcome to this. I have no idea how many exhibitions of Kenneth Webb's that we've had. Uh, but I can tell you that we first saw the painting of his 58 years ago. Uh, so we've been working together for a very, very long time. And uh, it has always been a real genuine pleasure. And I have to say, he is always full of surprises. And there are surprises in this extraordinary exhibition today. It's all images of the bog, which is literally surrounds his house near Clifton. <coughs> and uh, so we, we simply couldn't think of anybody better <coughs> to open the exhibition than Michael Gibbons, who is a kind of an archaeologist extraordinaire, but he's a lot more than that. He's a historian, he's a folklorist, he is a storyteller, uh, an adventurer, an explorer. He's all of those things. And all, almost all within the bounds of Connemara. Not exclusively, but almost. So, uh, would you welcome, please, Michael Gibbons to open the show? Gurmi Mahaving, thank you very much um, for coming. I'm delighted to be asked. It's my first experience of Connemara Bogs was as a young fellow going to Munger Bog, which is a part of the large roundstone bog complex. And I was going with the Canadians, our neighbours, on donkeys up the Dooning Road and down back across the old the old original road into Clifton that was built in the 1820s. And it's absolutely extraordinary to see these paintings here because I have spent a lifetime in bogs. I remember well arriving in St. Mary's for two years, the first encounter with Galway people, and being in many a row over being accused of being from the bog. <laughs> and so it's deeply seared in my consciousness the importance of bogs and the affinity with bogs. And uh, as an archaeologist, of course, I've spent 30 years going through them and mapping. And ironically, the latest discovery I've made in the bogs of Ireland, or in the landscape of Ireland, is a, a site remarkably similar to this wonderful painting here, which looks like a man emerging out of the bog there. But Kenneth's house is in, at the edge of the Ronstone Bog Complex, arguably the most important landscape we have in the Irish landscape, a vast stretch of lowland blanket bog stretching from the coast of Manon Bay all the way as far as Cashel, edged by Ronstone to the south, Clifton to the northwest, and Ballykinney. It's really a wonderful, magical place. That magic has been well captured in the works of Tim Robinson, for example, in his wonderful collection of stories, but the, the actual landscape itself has rarely been captured by artists. Certainly not to the degree that it's been captured here. And ironically, it's not the intact bogs of that landscape that's been captured. It's the cutaway bogs, the space created by the removal of the bogs, which, which is all around us here. As, as that bog is removed, a whole other botany and flora and fauna has emerged, emerged and the whole archaeological landscape peeping up out of it. So it's the removal of the bog, and of course, botanists are dreadful characters. I can never remember any more than about four bog plants. But they want the intact landscapes, as if there was ever an intact landscape. The landscape is always changing. I think it was Thomas Aquinas said this. The only permanent thing is change. And these changing landscapes are dramatically illustrated in the bog pictures we have today, from all seasons, all times, and, 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 and all growing seasons. I first encountered the archaeology of the bogs, I'm going to tell you a story, in Cairo many years ago, when I got a little message from Sean O'Lidon, thought, Cloch to a arm, I have a stone axe. Now when I went to see him, he had a stone axe, the most magnificent stone axe I've ever seen, from the Malone Road in Belfast, a horde of famous axes, and this would have fitted into it quite perfectly. And he told me, for me, go off for his leg, he had found his cutting tub, and there was two weights down the bog set up like this. That stone axe added about 5,000 years to the history of Connemara, that part of Connemara, that wonderful 
tangle of bog and sea and lake and hill and granite. It's like one very reminiscent of that painting at the background there with the cutaway bog. Since then I've been doing work in the islands and all along the coastal edge where these bogs enter the sea. And what you have on some of these wonderful paintings here, like this one, is the intertidal zone with the tide going out of these boggy little bays, the wall behind it, and the enclosed reclaimed bog room at the back, which is enriched by the seaweed. <coughs> this wonderful, rich uh, grass that you get in it, just packed with a whole array of, not bog plants, but a mixture of grassland and bog plants. So there's quite a magic about these, about these places. I remember talking to a woman from Osmuk one day and she complained about the weather. Be on bleen shop, nice mass and bleen the goosey, she was saying. This year was worse than the year of the bog timber. The years in Connemara, when it would rain all summer long, looks like we're heading that way this year, <laughs> that as they're cutting through and excavating into the, into the bog, they're throwing up and saving turf, but it's raining so much you cannot save it. But what emerges out of that, of course, is the bog timber. And there's a wonderful spectacle as you come in the door. These incredible bog sculptures. It's almost like a parallel exhibition we have in here. Mm. The surface of the bog and then the revealing of this ancient landscape. So that juice up was exported out of Connemara right down into the 18th century. And land was valued to cut away bogs. So we are losing our bogs at a horrendous rate. Letermuku, it's a wild, boggy place. Not very, not very obviously beautiful, but magical place. Uh, just east and north of Carrow, underneath the hills of Letchmore, the Quillia and Glen Trasna. There's a whole big bloody uh, wind farm proposed right on the edge of those bogs. These bogs are are our rainforests. They're absolute, even as botanists don't regard the cutaway bogs, but some of the cutaway bogs are the most magical places. And the magic of that bog, light, water, and, and the wonderful flowers, the lilies down in the corner there. The lily ponds that are shown in that painting down there come from a large industrial complex, the Marconi complex, the sort of cutting edge of modern technology, found in 1907. It's now an abandoned ruin, and I'm currently mapping it with a team of scholars. But in those cutaway wastelands, which were once waste, used to power the Marconi station. You go to those boggy roads now, now long abandoned, and they're just an absolute magical array of, of nature and bogs and all sorts of magical flowers in them. So these edgy bogs, the bogs that no one really pays attention to, uh, and because we're used to cutting them for fuel or walking through them, not really, or jumping our cars, an old tradition of coming around the edges of them. <laughs> uh, scenic car dumps. <laughs> but on the way to those lovely places, which have been used to dump people, this is sort of reminiscent of a bog body, this particular one here. These are truly places of huge ecological, archaeological, and cultural importance. Because the people, Domech Fasi is Monagi, Vexen are Honagi. The bogs, particularly the populations who lived on the West Coast were were tied very tightly into these boglands. They were part of their, 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 their literally part of their, their makeup because the bogs provided the fuel and turf, the provided the juice, provided the roofing materials, the proper moor grass provided the thatch, they provided the heat, the subsidence. So as the population mushroomed throughout these wonderful landscapes, they chewed into these bogs, and there was those bogs were exported to Ireland and to Canberra and all around the west coast. And left behind this incredible tapestry of 18th and 19th century landscapes. And in, within those landscapes, you have pockets of cutaway bog and partially improved boglands here. It's really a magical landscape, a human landscape with an ancient one edging it. That landscape has been unbelievably captured in these paintings. Last winter during the snow, I do a lot of climbing and scrambling around hills. Uh, I managed to climb the 12 bends in that very hard, frosty weather. We did the circuit of the Glen Horn Horse Show, big famous view over Connemara, with a set of pine out in the lake. And we came down over that, and of course we ran out of time because we weren't used to climbing on snow and ice. And as we came down to Erie Clear, we lost the light. The light was fading fast. But as we came down, the whole southern bogs 
all around Roundstone, from Roundstone all the way back to Croc Mordor, was all lit up in this magical glow of golden light. And just as the sun disappeared over the horizon, the whole of the Kerry Mountains and the thing of Croc Granon all the way east was all lit up. Just a line of these golden hills stretched across this amazing scene. When I came in here this evening, I've never seen this painting before. This was the scene that we saw. So these aren't exaggerated colours. The colour of our landscape <coughs> changes. The bog landscapes, if you take time to get out of your car and just they're quiet places, they're busy places, they're alive places. And that vibrancy of the bog uh, has been superbly captured in this exhibit. So I'd just like to declare it open. Thank you for coming. And thank Kenneth for his huge contribution to Irish Arts, to Connemara in particular, as his second home. Um, he's been coming to Connemara for ma very many years, long before I was born, or my dad. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so, congratulations, Kenneth. It's for a beautiful exhibition. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention. If this fella paints the bog, this fella paints word pictures of the bog, I have to say. <laughs> and uh, that was wonderful, wonderful, very poetic and lovely. So thank you for your attention, Berlamina Mahogi, and enjoy the exhibition. Thank you very much.